In this episode of Valfast, we're going to be continuing the LSV Tech version on the Integra. <laughs> Righto, so this is what we got up to last night. So, heads talked down. These are just uh, on there for the moment. I haven't talked them down or anything. They're just uh, basically hand tight. Headers aren't on yet, but I got the gasket on. Fuel rails on. Um, the plugs are on. Uh, we have an issue where we have a double up of the FI TV. So there's one on the B18B throttle body, and then there's one down there that connected to the B16 manifold. So we're gonna have to make a block off plate for the manifold and block off that hose that goes that one there. So I'll look into that soon, but at the moment I'm trying to get the timing on. So as you can see, let me just move that. You can see those two marks there are touching each other. And then the one here is flush with the head. And the other one on the other side is flush with the head. But the best way to check it is to stick a ruler against it and see if your timing line is lined up, which mine is. So it looks good. I think I've got the blo the blocks top dead center as well. All right, so there you can see the black plastic is lined up with the metal mark on the crank pulley, as you can see. So everything's at in time at the moment. So what I've got to do is put the timing belt on. So you usually pull it tight, start on the left side, pull it over to the right side, to turn it a few teeth, and then lock the tensioner off and see if it's in time. Right, so I've just torqued these up. They go to 20 foot-pounds, the 12 mils, and then I just did them basically as tight as I can go with this socket because they are super easy to snap and you don't want to snap it this far this far in. So they're all torqued down now. Timing belt's on. As you can see, no deflection. Perfect. It's perfectly in time. All the marks line up. So now I'm going to prep the valve cover to go on and chuck some new gaskets on. Right, so I've just put the valve cover gasket in. Just make sure you get that slot in there so it's nice and flat. Now we're going to chuck these bad boys in. Make sure there's nothing on the surface. We'll chuck that like that. Make sure you chuck these things on too. They have like a rubber seal on the back of them so they just go on below the bolts. Alright, so I've just put that engine mount there back in. Um, this line's tight again. I can't put this back in yet, but as you can see, time button, everything's in. Basically, most of the stuff over this side is complete. I'm just going to probably get on some wiring now. I'm going to chuck the VTEC solenoid on now, so just make sure you clean the surface it's mating to, and then you can chuck the VTEC solenoid on. I've popped the valve cover off because I forgot to do one extremely important step, and that was a valve lash, so I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Right now, so I'm doing the valve lash, and the specifications are 0.17 to 0.21, so I've got 0.15 and 0.2 because that's all of mine's got. So I'm gonna start with 1.5, make sure your cam loads are pointing up on the one you're testing. So 0.15 goes in pretty, pretty smooth. Try it on this one as well gone in pretty easy so then we're going to try 0.2 and chuck that in and that's pretty snug like I nearly have to jam that in so I would say that these valve lash are perfect alright so what I'm doing now is I've cut this green and white wire here now that is my wire for the VTEC because this car was originally an automatic transmission the VTEC only wire was utilized for Honda I don't know if it's like this in America, but it was here in Australia. They use the VTEC solenoid wire to control the shift solenoids. So all I've got to do is just find where that wire went and cut it off so now I can attach it to the VTEC solenoid. But I've just cut this one, stripped it, and uh, now I'm going to do the VTEC solenoid side. All right, so I've soldered that one and wrapped some electrical tape around it. I'm about to solder this one and wrap electrical tape around that. I'm going to get some, uh, eventually get some of that plastic wrap to go around all the wires, especially from the manual swap and all that. Just die so they're not in the way of anything or getting caught or getting too hot. 
So I'm just extending this corner line here. As you can see, there's the end and there's the end. Just extending it because on the old head, it used to be back where that big corner thing is there, but now it's the front. So I'm just extending the wires now. Another thing I had to do was I had to take this thing off and then spin that around. So now it's coming out the side instead of going down because otherwise you can't get that hose in. So now that's spun around, just have a rag in it because it'll spill a bit of fuel out if you are primed it. Um, so once now that's all on that hose there. Um, I'm gonna try and probably sort out the idle air control valve now, but I've got to make a block off plate for the FITV because um, I've already got one on the throttle body, so I've got to make a block off plate for that, and then I'm gonna stick a bolt in there and then chuck the hose clamp on. Um, just so the coolant can't leak out and it'll just go back and then back through, so that should should work. I'm pretty sure that's what we're gonna, I'm doing, but yeah, I'm gonna get onto it. I just chucked on the B16 idle air control valve because the B8 and B1 would not line up on the new manifold. So that's all in the hoses are in the plugs in. So now I'm gonna get on to making that plate. Oh, focus that plate down there. And I'll also clean the throttle body out with some braking parts cleaner because it's a bit dirty. So we've sorted out a few problems. So for the uh, FITV here, that was on the intake manifold, we've make, made a little block off plate right there. So that sits like that. And we're using a bit of cardboard as a gasket. So just, it's only air in there, so it's not water or anything. So all you need is just something to stop the air from getting out. So that just sits on there like that. And then we've also done the oil line to the head. Uh, I needed to rotate this fuel, fuel thing just here. I just got to loosen that top one off and then spin it and then tighten it back up. Uh, so I started to clean the throttle body a bit. Um, and for the spare oil line, that our uh, cooling line that was coming to the FITV, we are put a bolt inside the hose and put a hose clamp on so no coolant's gonna spill out. Alright, so there's the finished product down there. It's all tightened up. Now I can chuck the throttle body on, like that. And then we can button everything up, get the throttle cable, everything going. And basically get everything prepared. I'm gonna wrap these wires and then I can chuck the intake back on. And we should be pretty much finished over this side and also the distributor that we've got to cut the leg off. So as you can see, we've chopped that distributor leg off. Uh, you have to cut it off, otherwise it's in the way of the VTEC solenoid. So you can get VTEC uh, distributors, obviously, but they're quite pricey and I'm trying to keep it on the down low. So unfortunately as well, this leg here doesn't line up. So you can only run one bolt in it, but it should be fine because uh, the, the legs of the distributor are in the cam anyway, so it's not like it's um, rattling around everywhere. It's pretty tight um, and should be fine with only one bolt. Righto, so this is where we ended up. Uh, this is just on just so I can test fit the uh, uh, wires. They all fit nice. Spark plug cover's on. Uh, I'm going to torque down the valve cover. I'm just going to got the torque specs in a second. Still got to tidy up the wiring. That coolant hose isn't connected yet. Obviously, don't have the hose here yet. I don't know if this bracket, so... But other than that, everything is done. Um, all I've got to do is just, yeah, button up those things, and then she's ready to go. Um, tomorrow, after I put the dizzy in, I might start it just with uh, no coolant in it, but uh, we'll see how we go. That's going to wrap up part two of the LSV Tech Inversion. Make sure you stay tuned for the next episode where we hopefully get it all started and up and running. Thanks for watching this episode of Valve House.